Okay, welcome to Redesign. Um, we're going to talk today about, uh, I guess, uh, the art of design a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, why is good design sometimes the hardest sell to clients, to the public? Um, I mean, I found in my career, and I think a lot of others have too, that, uh, you know, sometimes it's the most groundbreaking work um, that's the most difficult to to do. It takes the most experience, it takes the most talent and um, the most drive. Um, but why is it such a struggle to really get clients to accept that kind of work? Um, so I think, you know, that's a topic that we can expand on. There's a lot there. Uh, and um, go for it. Who wants to who wants to add something? You want to go, Mary? Um, well, <clears throat> I, I wonder if as designers, and you know, the first of all, this happens to a lot of uh, people who create, not just designers, but I think writers say the same thing. Like they have the same problem where it's really difficult for them to sell quality work. And I wonder if we're failing there, educating the public on what the value is and we're not getting out there and talking about it enough and writing about it enough um, and just educating people. Mm. I think that's quite a good point is uh, people's perception of what good design is. Um, I think a lot of people are very saturated with branding, remarketing, you know, on the high street and things like that. I mean, we almost take it for granted. I mean, I was walking down the high street um, I think it was over the weekend, and I noticed, I think it was two of the major change. One's Greg's, it's like a local bakery uh, type, it's, it's national. Um, but they've all of a sudden, they've moved themselves into more of an upmarket front, dark greys rather than bright blues and yellows and things. And I just sat there and I thought, I wonder how many other people have noticed that. And could they honestly justify, if you sat down with someone and said, I'm gonna do the front of the shop gray now instead of the bright blue, because we think it looks classier. We want a, um, a higher end sandwich to sell to people. This is going to, you know, help do that. Um, we've got mood lighting inside. The interior is darker. You know, it's uh, looking a bit more high end. I mean, it can be difficult to justify costs like that to anything other than a major brand or a major chain, you know? That's a big dilemma. Yeah, that's a real uh, struggle. Um, I mean, I've always felt very strongly that even if people maybe can't isolate what it is that um, makes something work really well or look really great or draw them in, um, it, it still has some sort of an impact, maybe a subliminal one. Mm. But, you know, sometimes that point of view is just blown out of the water, too, when it just seems that people just don't get it. And, um, and they might find the more vanilla solution more appealing because maybe that's what they're used to seeing mm. it's uh you know it's not something that's alien to to them um so that's where it gets a little bit hard you know hey craig hey craig hey, welcome aboard you know well when when uh, back to your idea when you said something about a vanilla solution i wonder if some smaller companies are afraid to bust out of the vanilla solution oh, a lot of them are yeah, a lot of large ones are too, you know. Yeah, there's they want to look like everybody else. And really what we know, I mean what we try to push the four of us I know almost every day is, you know, stand out, be different, be yourself, you know. Um and uh looking like everybody else seems to be, you know, the, the more uh, commonly accepted way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Craig, do you have anything to add? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm sorry I was late. Hi, Craig. I know it's early there. Extra early, right? Is it? Uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning. So. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. No, that's not I thought it'd be worse. Coffee. <laughs> oh, coffee. Got my All Blacks t-shirt on that I got for Christmas. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. I like that graphic with that. Okay, the yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> what were we talking about? We're talking about why is good design sometimes the hardest to sell or, you know, why is the most innovative design so often the least appreciated 
by clients, the general public. You know, it's not really something that's, uh, you know, special to our industry. I think the same is true of music, you know. Yeah. Great creating. Yeah, well, we, you, you sort of touched on it a little bit this week when we were talking about, uh, you, you made a comment um, in Facebook about David Bowie and how we tend to appreciate yeah. uh uh, particularly music artists, I think, after they die more than when they're alive. And I think it's more so the case with, with art than design. Most design is pretty middle of the road, I'd say. We, you know, we, we, stint, we tend to <clears throat> stick to the commercial realities of what we're trying to do. Um, but there are some really, really amazing uh, uh, designers and companies out there that really push the boundaries of... Uh, of design and um, they're exciting to watch because they make you question the status quo and and I love watching those guys and and I'm I don't think that I'm personally one of those those people that tend to push the you know go beyond I think I probably work and and you know all of us here probably tend to work within the 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 boundaries if you like of of you know the commercial realities of what people like, um, and we tend to look to those innovators for new directions. And, and it's it's funny how it goes. I mean, um, when when I was at art school, uh, and a lot of you know Paul and and um, and Octopus there, oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matthew, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Um, particularly, yeah. um, like Mary, did you go to? Did you do design at art school or anything like that? No, I did. did I did Mary, design courses. Her name is D Digital. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 I, I just didn't want to. Yeah, but I didn't get a degree. I, yeah, I didn't want to leave you out of the equation. But what, okay. what I was getting to was, uh, uh, my my tutor, uh, he 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 didn't want us to be constrained by by commercialism by the commercial realities. He wanted us to push the boundaries, so we'd we'd, we'd get given uh, projects to work on, and mm. they they would look really way out there, but it was to get us to learn to learn about concepts and to learn about aesthetics of, associated with design, mm. and to push the boundaries, if you like. So it's interesting to say that, Craig, because I do think when I was younger, I worked a lot harder to try to be innovative and to do something that yeah. no one's seen before, you know? Yeah. And then over time, you sort of realize that everything's been done. You know? <laughs> um, and also, it just gets really tiring after a while, banging your head against the wall, trying to get, you know, <laughs> more groundbreaking work through the system, so to speak. Yeah. Um, it is and, tough. You can do it with your own work, obviously. You know, that's that's a plus. Um, you, you can afford to be a little bit more innovative and a little bit off the wall with yeah. some of your stuff, you know. Um, I, I like to do that. I like to do personal projects where perhaps, you know, I can just put the ideas out there. It doesn't matter, you know, good, bad or indifferent or hopefully not offensive like, but just out there sort of stuff. I mean, at least then if people are looking at what you do, you know, they, they may get a feel for, you know, you you, you might be the, the guy that needs to sort of push them a little bit and get that sort of idea out of them, you know. I've, I've, I've been told <laughs> um, when people meet me and they work with me and I start giving them ideas on projects, they say to me, oh, your, your website doesn't reflect how creative you are, you know. Um, and I just think, oh, perhaps I should be a bit more out there, you know, with some of my stuff. Um, yeah. But as you say, it's very difficult to get the, you know, the, the quirkier ideas for advertising and stuff like that. It's... You know, you can come up with ideas all day long. Um, they'll invariably just revert back to the safe option, you know, and as you say, it gets tiring, you know. Only so long you can do that. It's hard to know how far to push it sometimes, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, you do want to do work that's that's different, that also uh, satisfies your own creative impulses. But, um, you know, you have to also have... Uh, you know, clients who are going to support that type of work and where's the balance, you know? And I think a lot of this is about balance, you know, how much, how much art can you bring into design versus just satisfying the, uh, the brief, you know, yeah. and doing something that, you know, will satisfy the client, 
you'll get paid, they'll be happy, it might be effective. But you know, in your heart, maybe it's not, you know, the kind of work you could have done. Mm. Um, it's a quandary I think probably a lot of us struggle with, whether we know it or not. Yeah. So, I, 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 yeah. sorry, Mary. So when you guys do your own branding and your own, your own work, um, do you ever get feedback on that work and then share that with potential clients? I shared my, I recently redid my website and I sort of posted that on Google Plus and I got a lot of nice comments off you guys. And interestingly as well, some different directions on the content of the work and, you know, how I sh should perhaps be presenting certain aspects of that. So to be honest with you, I probably trust you guys opinions more than I would I wouldn't put it out to clients because I think that's just going to be designed by committee then you know I also um, wouldn't share it with clients until it's ready and then I yeah. try to make a big no, I mean once it's done once it's done and you've released something in your new brand and you get positive comments about it from people do you ever mm -hmm. share that with potential clients when you're trying to give them a new idea uh, well, <laughs> I haven't done my website in years. I'm 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 terrible, uh, and it's, it's it's a shocker. But uh, <laughs> but, but here, Craig, I'm in I'm on the verge of trying to get started on it again. Well, and we oh. have to think about websites, right? We, we don't have to keep it on websites. Look, we yeah. can talk about when other I, things, right? Yeah, my, my when when I uh, created my logo design, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, for, oh, must have been four years ago, three or four years ago, I think. Uh, gosh, time flies. Uh, it, I, I, I use my logo when, quite often when I'm talking with uh, clients in meetings, like uh, on Skype or in Hangouts, or um, even when I'm presenting, uh, uh, I, I use my logo occasionally as an example of my style, of what I do. So and and because it embodies the meaning that I bring to yeah, visual branding, right? And so right, what, right from the start. And so, what do they? And what? And is that? Does that sell them? Does that persuade them? Well, to, well, to well, enable you to think a little bit outside the box <laughs> with them. Well, well, I think that um, when when we talk. Like, like we're we're visual branding people here, and and marketing people, and if we can't create a good uh, image for ourselves, then how can we expect people to or, or clients? I can hear myself echoing. Sorry. Um, how how can we expect our clients to um, believe what we say if we don't? Um, present ourselves very well. well. So that goes without saying. We have to yeah. present oh, ourselves. Yeah. That's right. So, as so I think. Uh, <laughs> so when when I when I created my logo, I was really really conscious of um, of it, it. It's really really funny, but I I kind of wandered around in the wilderness, so to speak, for a number of years as a freelance designer. And then I had a eureka moment like five, six years ago about who I was and what I was about um, with my company and the direction I wanted to take and everything. It was like a wow moment. And, and I finally got it. And, and, and when I developed my logo, it embodied everything that I understood that I finally came to understand. And, and it, it, it sort of, it's, it embodies everything that you believe about um, design and about the direction of your company. And if you can explain your logo and explain your own brand really well, you should be able to do that really well for another client. You're, you're not just painting pretty pictures for them. That the uh, the design that you're creating, um, as innovative as it is, um, whether it's within the commercial boundaries or whether it's quite abstract and whether it's more artistic and, and, and right out there, depending on what it is. I mean, if you're doing a a design for a something in the art field like it's a it's a new exhibition coming up then then yeah it might be quite way out there and you've got the the liberty to to kind of express yourself a bit more but but you should be able to explain why you do what you do and 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 that starts with your own company 
Yeah. Well, yeah, because I was thinking if clients are afraid to bust out and do something different, then make our job to show them examples of either our own work or clients' work that we did and then show them good results that came from doing something unique and something different and something that's not vanilla. That's kind of where I was going with those questions. Is that something that happens though a lot, I mean, you know, frequently, uh, you know, we'll show samples that we've done for other clients, right? I'm talking about all of us um, and show how, you know, it worked for them. This is the solution that we came up with for uh, whatever the problem was and we can do the same for you. But there's a lot of clients that are so literal, they just can't, you know, they can't even skew a little bit away and say, well, that does, you know, I, I don't think I'd want that photograph used for my company, you know, or I wouldn't want that color, you know, pink just doesn't work for me. But, and then, and then, and then I was like, no, 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 I, I understand that. This is just something, you know, showing kind of a similar type of problem for somebody else. I would definitely come up with a totally custom solution for you the same way. And, you know, I'd say about probably 25% of the people I deal with really have a trouble even making that leap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes very little, aren't they? They need to see exactly what they're getting. And I think, I take it for granted sometimes when I see a photo, um, I've got a blank A4 page there, I've got a bit of copy, and in my head I can see exactly what I need to put on that page to make that work. And I expect clients to think like I do, and they don't. I don't know. And it's very difficult <laughs> to explain without doing the whole thing. Right. And actually putting it there and almost drawing the picture for them. Um, and equally, sometimes you'll have the client say, well, can you just try that there or that color against that? And you say, well, that, that blue and that green is just going to buzz. It's not going to work. Can I just see it? And you're almost like, well, I've just told you it's not going to work. We can right. spend five, ten minutes doing this and you've seen it not working or you can just listen That's to That's a me. difficult thing, too, because you would hope that they would trust you enough. Because yes. Obviously, you're the expert. You're the person who came to for their project. And then they start questioning you on every little decision, like, well, can you show me, you know? And it's like, well, you know, I, I can see it in my head. I don't have to spend the hours it's going to take to develop something just to show you to prove that you're wrong, you know? And, and you know, that's where – and then they don't want to pay money, you know, enough money at the time, too. So it's like, yeah, that I also makes it a lot more difficult. Clients are getting a lot more involved earlier on now, I think. You know, in the, I think I've been in the, in the industry 20 years, and – they tend to get more involved at the cold face now. I Skype a lot of uh, clients, and to my detriment, some of them now are actually, you know, we're pushing things around on screen, which I don't like doing because, you know, the process is messy. It's never finished. And the amount of times, you know, you'll highlight something on the screen and say, oh, I like that color. Right. And it's like, no, no, we're just highlighting that. It's just got a mad pink for two seconds, and it's going to go back to... So it's all of that, you know, which is which is difficult, really. Um, that the industry is people are getting more used to it, and they are getting they think they can get more involved with it and have the experience and um, the, the skills to, to do the work themselves, if you like. But I mean, it quickly becomes apparent when a client is left on their own. They realise I had a client ring today. Um, I've done the website for I've worked with them for years. And will they give me their advertising? Um, and the marketing guy they rang up today and he said, oh, we've I've just been looking at all our adverts and all of the different publications. We've gone to set up artwork in houses to do that. He said, the only thing that's consistent is our logo. Other than that, you wouldn't know we're the same company. So all of a sudden, he's seen the value in what I can bring to him now in, in building that brand of one central source, supplying the adverts to the publications as they need and he's willing to pay a monthly fee for that, you know, which is great. But I we'll have to wait to have that land on my doorstep, you know. Yeah, the best work is usually um, created when there's that trust. And that trust only comes with time. Working with a new client, you know, sometimes it's getting to know you. And it takes a little while to develop that kind of uh, relationship. But then once you get there, you know, then you can kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So do you think... Um, do you think you have to take baby steps to build that trust? I think so. Is yeah. that a good yeah. way to start to do it? So that neither party's investing too much. 
the client or the designer. <laughs> you get a feel for, I mean, when you meet a new client or, you know, potential new customers, you get a feel for, I think I'm going to get on okay with this guy or girl or, because I, I, I tend to go by that a lot, you know, if I think just this isn't going to work, you know, I either sort of try and price myself out of it or not answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, well, I try to be polite, that. but I mean, if you, can work with, the person. Yeah, I mean you've got, if you can work with people that like your style of work, like what you do, and have seen your portfolio, uh, you know, and, and can appreciate the time that you put into projects, you know, and, and, and what you bring to the plate. I think, you know, maybe the baby steps aren't so, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to take so many of those with those types of clients, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is definitely building trust. What helps is taking the time to uh, look around a person's office, you know, see what's hanging on their walls, get a sense of their style. Um, mm -hmm. And also just their attitude towards, you know, the business. Um, how open they might be to innovation or not. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, also, I mean, you, you're talking about, you know, good design with that being the end product, but there's also the process involved with that. Now, yeah. um, I'm working on a big catalog for a customer now, about 130 pages, and it's quite intense work. Um, That's big. But I had, I had it off another designer who was a bit older than me, and he'd done it for about 11 years, fair dues. I mean, I'm trying to beat that, you know, I'm on the third one, but I'm, <laughs> I'm badly lagging some days. Um, but when he gave me his InDesign files, I mean, there was, I'm talking a little bit technical here, but all of the text boxes were unlinked. They were all separate and they were all just basically moved around on the page like you would do in a scrapbook. I mean, it was, it was useless for the size of the project. I mean, you needed um, flow text right the way through the InDesign document. So the, the full hit style sheets for headings, um, bullet points. So if the client then says, oh, I don't like that blue, can you change it to, to a black? One click on the style sheet and it goes right the way okay. through. And Mary, this is a little bit like your cascading style sheets on okay. web design, you know? But what I bring to the plate there is the speed of work. So that for me, I think is good design because I'm setting the document up correctly. When the client then wants to make changes and wants to do them quickly, I can facilitate that. I can get the changes done quickly. She wants to rework a spread. I'm not having to spend three hours shifting everything around and then having to, you know, cascade all the other pages through. You know, it all just flows through automatically. So good design is also about doing the process well. Right. right. I think, and, you know, that's a really good point because good design really is giving the client the freedom to go to another designer if something happens. Like, I... I feel that that's really important in web design. So all of my code is commented so that if someone else needed to pick it up, they'd be able to do it. And I don't put people on private hosting. I give them their own hosting account. You know, I just set them up so that if something happens between us, mm -hmm. they can exit and it's clean and it's not time consuming and the next person can pick up. And I think it works that way too in design, like you just told right but that that's kind of buried right like not very many people will know that some, when you're done with that catalog someone else can pick it up if something happens to you or mm -hmm. the relationship goes bad or something and they're going to be they're probably going to save a lot of time and a lot of money because of the work that mm -hmm. you did and i think that's a lot of that. clients. <laughs> not a lot of designers care about that it's yeah. the stuff that we don't, you don't see right a lot of stuff you start see. working with you you know, that they, they realize, oh, actually, I mean, she took a real leap. I mean, working with someone for 11 years to then come to me. The guy came over, he spoke to me. We had a conversation that was really nice. She's a very nice client. She works me hard, but the end product is very, very good. But she does work, you know, she gets a pound of flesh out of me. But I, I like that because when I finish the work, I'm really proud of it and I can show other people. And I think the effort's there. It's just, it, it shows, you know, but... Um, it, it, it's only when you start working with that designer then you realize, you know, she did say, oh, I think I've landed on my feet finding you, you know, which I really appreciated. You know, it was a nice thing for her to say. Um, and I just thought, yeah, you appreciate the effort that, that's been put in here, you know. Yeah. So, Mary, you brought up something else too, uh, user experience, but also um, when it comes to, like, developing icons, for example, just to drill down to some little... To, to some very specific examples. Um, 
you know, they have to read easily, right? They have to get a message across very easily. The icon has to be understandable in a moment's glance. And you can't be really too creative there either, right? Because it's got to communicate. And uh, Capone's over here ready to say hi. Come over here, baby. Hey, look at him. Put your nose in here, why don't you, the way you always do around this <laughs> Halfway through, he's like, okay, I'm done with this ignoring me thing. <laughs> But, uh, you know, those little graphic symbols that we use as identifiers or uh, road signs, so to speak, on websites, um, you know, you can only be so creative there, too. I tend to fall back on a lot of the cliches because, let's face it, the cliches exist for a reason because they get, you know, the idea across. Just, uh, you know, easily readable symbols. Right. I, well, that's another part of it, right? I mean. Yeah. If creativity makes it so it's difficult or not clear, then you know we can't go that far. Um, but I, you know, and th and that, I think that's something we have to teach our client, you know, train people about too, because that's that's the number one thing I see when people decide to do their own. Well, you guys probably see a lot more, but when people start to do their own graphics and design and websites. The number one thing I see is that it's not clear. It's like a, it's like a communication disaster, and you're just like, oh, right. no, yeah. no, don't do that. You know, and I've actually seen that in physical books. Like, you know, I use guidebooks a lot, and the number one thing that a guidebook has to do is get me to a climb. And I've used guidebooks where I cannot get to a climb because yes. there's so much garbage on the page. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I don't want to see those symbols that I don't understand that have to do with your town. I want to know how to get to the climb and what is there. And I think that's the big number one goal. And then if you can make it look, and we have to make that look good too, but that towards as designers, that puts us in somewhat of a constraint. How do you go around um, selling UX design, Mary? I mean, I do websites. I find that the hardest thing to explain to clients is how you use the website putting a certain design together, how that's going to make the user experience better. I mean, touching back on really people's perceptions of what good design is and how things work, you know, I find that a real tough sell. Yeah, um, well, there's a couple things I do. Um, whenever there's a like a user test that I have available to me, I can show someone a user test, which is a video of people. And th those things can really spot confusion pretty fast and i think mm -hmm. the other thing that i really like about those tests is you start to get a better handle of how fast someone looks at your site and you know and how that they really 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 do scan and that you start to get you start to get much more respect about clear stuff and clear messages and what paul said icons that someone can look at fast and mm -hmm. and, and the message is clear on what they want to do with that icon you know um, so that's one thing. The other thing is recently I've been exploring a lot of user testing that you know, people have done on larger sites with a lot of traffic and they're trying to get conversions, right? And conversion lifts. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the design test stuff has been tested. Like when I first started looking at these things, my expectation was content and copy and that's all the thing that's getting tested. But no, mm. there's some design stuff that's getting tested and there's some actual data behind there that shows what people did before and what people did after to, to change the design and how that lifted um, conversions or time on site or bounce rate. And then I actually got feedback on my user test, which I shared with Paul on someone who thought, wow, this design is really professional. I would give her a call. And you know, like mm -hmm. you get that data on a video, you're like, yeah, you know, like you want to show that to your clients because that's that first impression thing that design captures. And I think the three of you are really good at that. That it's really hard to get your quantitative data about it, but someone's opinion on a video is a pretty big testimonial to that. Do you present that kind of stuff as well to clients? What was that? Do you present that sort of stuff to clients, with, you know, going in to perhaps see something new? Would you say I will now. I just got that piece of data, so I will. <laughs> you know, all this testing and everything is really great, and, and um, it's important. 
my fear is that a lot of times though what it does is it pulls our creativity back because people are going to be able to navigate uh, using your example websites, you know, um, a lot more easily if it's familiar and it's what they're already used to. So our designs, again, are going to be pigeonholed into kind of like maybe a set, you know, template that people, uh, by and large, you know, see everywhere else. Um, so, so, you know, how much creativity is at risk once we start to uh, put so much emphasis on, on the data or, you know, on the metrics, on the on the um, user testing. Um, Mary, have you have you found that, you know, some of that kind of, you know, the creativity flies out the window and yes, you are getting maybe a certain amount of um, more familiar, you know, usability uh, with whatever you're creating. Um, well, but maybe, not, maybe the emotional aspect of it all gets a little bit lost because it's not as different anymore. Well, but that's... In my specific example that I just explained, it was regarding the big images that are on my site. Right, right. Um, and that was emotional. That was like, wow, this person looks really professional. Right. So I feel like that kind of, I think that kind of feedback is emotional. And it is about the design and it is about first impression. So I think that opens the door to create. You know, because the thing yeah. about the thing about my site is kind of nice, and I'm trying to figure out how to use this better. Is that when you compare it? You know, a lot of a lot of the trend right now is these big hero images with text, and everyone's doing it. But you look at my site, and it's a big image. It's got some text on it, but it doesn't have that. That it doesn't fall into that exact template. And I'm like, well, you know, I just got someone who said I'm going to scroll down the page because of this. So can I keep that, and then? do something with the text below it, you know, and I can keep the creativity there. So that's kind of why, what I'm going to use it for. And I think it does open the door to a, a different design besides the hero image with the text and the CTA. That's, yeah. my, you know, mm -hmm. does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Paul, Paul, I'm just going to let somebody else take a seat if they oh, want okay. to come somebody in. Else I, coming in. I, I feel like I'm hogging, so, and I'm not really saying much, so I'll, 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 I'll exit I'll it and see if somebody else wants to come in. All right, Craig, appreciate it. Thank you. Great seeing you, man. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. stay out there. Let's watch it. Okay. See you later. Uh, you know, how much, how much do we as designers design for other designers? Um, the awards competitions kind of promote that and yeah. I know, you know, big advertising agency just came out and said, you know, we spend a hell of a lot more time, more time than we should on awards. And it should really be about obviously how effective we are for our clients, not about how many awards we win. And how many, you know, how much of this can, um, are we at risk at also for trying to, you know, satisfy what other designers might think of our work versus what's best for the project, for the client? I, I tend to favor the latter really. And, and I'll, I'll design and produce work that is going to deliver for that client, you know, rather than get me an award or, I mean, uh, the uh, Dribble and Behance platforms, I mean, they've been criticised recently for just being full of um, redesigned sort of projects that are completely made up and it is almost sort of uh, ego stroking, you know, there's, right. it's all been good putting something together that, um, is never going to hit the real world and you can just be as creative as you like with it. But, you know, ultimately, is that going to work? You know, I mean, I think there's that balance, isn't there, between something that's commercially viable and, um, yeah, yeah, the designers liking what you do. But then again, I mean, you do get other designers who do like your work, you know. Um, so that's always a positive, really. I don't I actively look for awards. I don't think... Uh, I, I can't say that that would swing me if I was buying a product, you know, with how many awards uh, cycling company has won for its online sales. I want to look at the bike and I want to know it suits me, you know, at the end of the day. 
Well, so, the theory is that too, the clients you know, uh, will be drawn to you if they see that you're an award-winning designer, you know. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know how much they really care. I mean, it's nice to have that maybe on your resume, so to speak, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think they're more interested in us effectively solving their problems than in how many awards yeah. we want. Do you think the awards are more powerful if you want to go work for a design agency? Hello there. Welcome. Hello. I'm sorry, Mary. Let's start it again. Do you think the awards are more powerful as a designer if you want to go work for an agency? I think it helps to have it on your resume, you know. Yeah. Do you think that gets you a job at an agency? I don't think it gets you a job, but I think it's part of the mix that's good to have on your, you know, resume. It could work the other way as well. I mean, you could be seen as a threat, you know, too creative, too um, too successful, too much of a threat to the MD or the creative director of the studio. Yeah. So uh, it can work both ways. Hello, JP. Hi, JP. Hey, hi, how's everybody doing? Hey, Paul. Hi there, good to see you again. Paul, I've been enjoying some of your posts. Are you the redesign? You have the redesign community on Google Plus? That's right, yes. Okay, yeah. Yep, I get all of your notifications. I haven't turned your notifications off yet. Okay, well, <laughs> we, we haven't annoyed you enough yet. No. So. <laughs> this is our big opportunity right here. No. <laughs> All right. So what I'd like to say is join in more. You know, say uh, speak up a little bit. Let us know that you're there. Okay, I'd love to. I'm here. We'd love to have your input. Yeah, super. You're, you've said on the comments there you're um, 20 years in the industry. Yeah. Is that uh, what type of design? Sorry, he's he's rope what, what type of design? Are you graphic design, web design, or? I. Uh, your your voice is roboting. Everybody else hear that, or is that just me? He's asking what type of design you're you're involved in. Yeah, um, uh, most of all, I'm an old print guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not old. I, oh Let's back up. Uh, I've been working in the print. I branding, logo, print work. Uh, okay, his voice was hanging on there at least, at yeah, the <laughs> but he dropped out a few seconds. <laughs> Even though he didn't. <laughs> Come on back in. Give it another shot. Safety. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the fun of technology. Mm. But, um, okay, here he, he's giving another shot here. Oh, no. that, that never happens to me, you know. I just, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know what you heard or where I left off, but. Uh, uh, You're talking about being a print designer. I had worked in print and I moved over to digital, gosh, in um, 2000, I guess. And so, um, but yeah, I've been listening to the young lady uh, who I'll refer to as the diva, I guess. <laughs> the digital diva. <laughs> He's frozen. Yeah, he froze again. He's outdoors, it's probably the problem. Maybe yeah. if you went back into your house, you'd have better <laughs> Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. I never heard that. Yeah, that's what happens to me. If I'm out on my deck, you know, forget yeah, about it. Yeah, I'm the deck thing. <laughs> yeah. I love the deck thing until that happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Got to go back inside. So, all right. So, I mean, there's so much more to talk about here. Creativity, uh, you know, it's paradoxical, I think, because... Like I was saying when we first started talking about this is that, you know, really, I, I mean, the effort it takes to do something that's really original, that still solves a problem, um, that's a lot different than what you usually see out there that people can still be attracted to. I mean, that's like a win, 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 you know, and it, it takes an enormous amount of effort. And sometimes it takes even more effort just trying to get it through the process, especially if there's layers of approvals or, you know. The boss's boss's boss has to see it, and then you know it can get shot down after after a month of work because that person, for whatever reason, wasn't involved at the get go. Um, and then sometimes you got to tailor, you know, scale it back a little bit, uh, whatever, whatever. But um, it's paradoxical that sometimes I think what's really the best work is the hardest to get through. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And as a business, sometimes you know it's also uh, it's also harder um, 
to make a profit like that because the hours that go into it, you know, aren't always the hours that you're able to recoup on the other side as a business. Um, it would be much easier for most designers, I think, just to kind of like, uh, you know, create things that um, are a lot easier for us to, to do that might look like more other work that might even be more uh, appealing to cl cl clients and they're more willing to pay for it. But we know in our hearts, it's not really, really the best work we're able to do. So, you know, that's something that I feel that I've struggled with throughout my career, just that notion that uh, the best work isn't always the, uh, the most practical in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I wonder if you have to have a balance of yeah. you know, some work that um, is more practical where you're not going to lose. I, I think for, for me personally, it's just a time loss, right? When you right. try to push the envelope or be more creative and maybe you just, I have to put more constraints on that. Yeah, maybe that's part of the answer is doing more personal work to kind of, you know, satisfy that urge and, um, you know, leave it outside of the business uh, aspect of our work. But, you know, it's kind of sad in a way because we do want to do our best work within our careers. Yeah. Uh, it's and really I'm hard to find those types of clients to do that work for. Yeah. Uh, it's painfully apparent as well with reading a lot of comments on the redesign community and, you know, when we get topics where we, you know, we're talking about the industry and how we feel about that, you know, we're all in it for the love, really. You know, I, I certainly am. I I love doing what I do. Um, and yeah, I mean, if 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 you don't get that balance right, and you are just doing mediocre work all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not you're not going to last. You know, you, you've got to find uh, some sort of balance there. I, I do. You, you do get the odd client where you can push the boat out a little bit. I wouldn't say it's extremely pushed out, but um, right. you know, you can sort of flex a little bit of creative muscle there. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, you, you've got to pay bills as well, so you've got to be realistic about projects. So I, yeah, it's all balance. So yeah. I, what I get on my 200th, uh, 200th day on Blab anniversary, everything starts to go on fire, and I haven't had any trouble for like a year. So. <laughs> AT&T, got to love them. Yeah. Well, they're, they're generally very good. So. so while we've got you here, JP, uh, what do you think about what we've been talking about here, about how sometimes the most innovative work is, you know, the hardest to uh, make work as a business um, for us? Sometimes the hardest to sell, it takes the most time, um, and is often the least appreciated. It depends on the client. Um, I love mature clients who've already been through three, four, five bad designers uh, because they've learned what the, the correlation between visual and content and conversion. They've, they've learned, uh, you know, they've already kind of, kind of like, kind of like dating. You know, you start off dating with the first person, and then you realize what you don't like, and then you move to the next one. Or people that have been married like six times by then they should understand you know <laughs> right so there's the baby steps we were talking about earlier you know yeah, yeah, right developing that kind of yeah. relationship that develops trust yeah but the bulk of everybody knows i mean the, you know like i was mentioning earlier the industry has changed and it seems to me all the really good designers probably did not get affected by recession or uh, you know, the global change, everything going to templates, and now you can get like pure templates online, in addition to WordPress templates galore at theme forests everywhere. So the bulk of the industry now, every you know, anybody and everybody you know, must have a website. You get new people coming in and they only want to pay like 500 bucks for like a website. And they, in terms of visuals, you know, from a design point of view, like uh, Octopus, um, <laughs> it's, I'll just go by Octopus. Um, <laughs> Matthew Octopus. Yeah, I like it. 
you know, you're probably a seasoned designer, Paul. You're probably a seasoned designer. So you kind of win, you know, when you do good work and the client doesn't even notice it, right? But that client is probably, you know, I don't know, what, a small pizza franchise that has two stores, you know, locally and they want a website. So I don't think, I, don't, I think they don't really think about it because unless the client and themselves has taken a design class, you know, they're not going to really, as long as it doesn't look bad, they're fine, right? Um, the problem is if they take a class, they think they can do it all themselves. Yeah, so. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I've, I've seen, I guess my, from my perspective, I've learned to sort of separate myself from the design process, just make sure it's good and clean and not be personally offended uh, or take it personally or be a, or be a prima donna about it because right. from their perspective that you know they're like why is this costing me you know two thousand dollars or why does this website cost me you know four hundred you know four thousand dollars and that's what they're thinking about more than probably anything mm -hmm. so um and they're not you know it and you're, you're like you're trying to help them you know, online and then they then you have to face the idea of it's not just the creative. It's like, well, all I got to do is park myself on the internet. And they'll come, and like, mm. no, you know. So, right. so there's a lot. There's a lot more than just creative. So I, I kind of have learned to separate myself from from that process of, hey, this is good stuff. Why aren't you thanking me? You know. So. Right. We all know design is not art for art's sake, you know, and that's where it comes back to maybe, you know, doing it on the side if that's your passion is one solution. Um, but then again, let's submit it. I mean, a lot of us got into this field because of the art, right? That's how, how it all started. And mm -hmm. if we can still maintain, you know, some of that art in our work as a business for our clients, you know, that is what is also going to set us apart. From others and um, if you're the type of designer that has a specific style that people are coming to you for so much the better so you know it's a complex issue again as we tend to usually get into on these blabs there's yeah. different ways of looking at these things but um, you know it's a shame if we have to lose the art part too isn't it let's be honest yeah absolutely yeah, yeah I, I think if you get a reputation for providing good clean quality um, you're probably not selling. People are not coming to you, even though it's funny because they use the word web design. Right? I need a web designer. And of course, we all know that term really means I need a web developer. Right. And all these web developers are jumping all over, like calling themselves designers, right? Because all they got to yeah. do is go to theme force, get a Divi theme, pop it up on a WordPress site, populate it with content, and go live and get paid. You, know, you raise an excellent point because we can ourselves be our own worst enemy as an industry where people are, kind of, you know, using kind of defining things differently than others might. Like you say, you know, web designers think of themselves as de as de as designers, but a lot of times they're really developers, yet that term sort of sticks. But they're not bringing the kind of design to a project that I might bring to. Yeah. I mean, I would need a developer to work yeah. with, but you know, the design is yeah, not there. The way. They're two mutually exclusive um, yeah. industries: the web developer and the web designer. Um, I do a bit of coding. I wouldn't say I'm a genius. I can do HTML, CSS, PHP, and all that. Lost. Yeah. So I get developers in to help me with that for their expertise. Um, I've not met a web developer that's a good designer. I've not met a designer that's a good web developer, you know? Yeah. And don't go to someone who says that they are because the two are mutually exclusive in my book. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I like the code because I like to have a little element of control and to be able to offer... A lot of my designs I give to, to developers change. Little things happen. They say, oh, well, we put this in because of this. I'm like, well... I wouldn't have put it down like that on the PDF I sent to you if I didn't want it like that. It's not me being pedantic. I've designed it. That's how I want it to look. So by doing the HTML and CSS myself, I can handle the design element in-house and get it how I want it. But right. as you sort of said earlier, Paul, it takes a little bit longer, but I do feel my projects are worthwhile because they look different to the WordPress themes. They look different to 
you know, the out of the box solutions. I'm sure Mary's exactly the same, you know, where it's, you go into somebody to build you something unique, you know, bespoke that will work for you. Um, and you can't get that on, um, you know, Joomla uh, template site, WordPress template sites, you know, you can't get it with one on one net, the website builder online, you know, as much as they advertise it on the telly, you'll yeah. be disappointed with the product. It's cheap, right? It's cheap for a reason. There's no good design in it. And then, of course, a problem is when somebody buys off on going in that route um, and, and then down the road, you know, they want to make this change and that change and you can't do it. You know, you can't. It doesn't have exactly. the flexibility of adapting that way. As JP said, they'll go to three, four of those, and then they'll come to you and they'll realize then why you're spending the money. Right. Um, I've spent yeah. so much. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I, I, was, I, had a, I, had a, I had one client. Uh, let's see. They fired me twice and hired me back three times. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hope the math works out in in the end. <laughs> it didn't work out for the client very well, but it works out for you. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because what they're hiring and paying for is web design. Yet design is the, like the last thing on their mind. You know, it's weird. Well, it's like yeah. the coffee shops you drive by too, and in the window they offer you know everything from logo design to web design. But really, what they are is a copy shop, you know, and 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 that also distorts, I think, the public's idea about what design is. So there are just so many forces out there, you know, working against us in terms of getting the public to understand. One thing we talked about a little bit earlier was you know educating the public. And uh, I, I feel my entire career, I've been trying to educate either a client or the public, and that's what we're doing in the redesign group and all that too, all the time. Um, but you know, how many people really get it? Um, in fact, I've worked with clients for 10, 20, 20 years, and yeah, they start to come along, but there's still a lot that they just don't get for whatever reason. And they're smart people in their own area or whatever, but they just can't grasp design sometimes and all it brings to the business but paul but you that's you really want it that way paul because you just said earlier if they took a design class then they're going to come and tell you how to design so you really want that you almost want your clients to be ignorant and true bring the solution <laughs> okay. to them. and yeah. uh, for them to just like yo you know, beth you know they don't say what <laughs> I'm yeah, even though they find somebody on the side. Sorry. <laughs> even, they, even though they may not like send you like a, a dozen roses, you know, because it was it looked so beautiful. Yeah. You know, probably, for a second, I'm going to jump off so someone else can come in here because a bunch of people just joined. So I am going to open up the seat. Um, it was nice chatting with all you guys. I'll stay in on the comments. <clears throat> nice to meet you, JP. Talk to Mary. All right, Mary. Thanks. All right, Mary. We only have a few minutes left. So if somebody's going to jump in. Come on in. Uh, there we go. My friend is going to join us now. I've got a lot to say. I don't know why. <laughs> Beth has a lot to say. Beth, your camera's not working. Uh oh. Let's see. What is the. Wait. Uh, how many days on Blab? 149 days. She should have her staff. She should have her tech ready. But um, I, I feel like that most clients in life, they do appreciate the good work at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm talking about like web work or even print work. But um, whether they do or verbalize that appreciation or not, um, as long as we know, you know, Octopus and Paul, we know if it's good. Right. Mm. And that should be the reward in itself. And the ultimate reward is if they pay you. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's all balance. That's for sure. Beth's uh, camera isn't working. Beth, we're going to have to try that again oh she's on firefox um oh yeah that might be it all right she, somebody else want to jump in if she has chrome we only have a few minutes left anyway so i was having trouble with firefox earlier too when i was experimenting with it and and blab i'm not sure why but uh if she's got other things like skype uh or other things controlling the camera quit those apps and or try chrome right oh, chrome, well we're kind yeah. of just winding this down right now anyway Okay. Good. Thanks, Paul, for having me on. But it was great. Yeah, great talking to you. And um, you know, there's a lot here, and I think we all have similar frustrations. But like we were saying too, when we first started, Salvador Dali wasn't always appreciated in his 
his day, and either was MC Escher or Van Gogh or any of those dudes, right? So we're not alone. There's <laughs> hope yet, Paul. There's hope yet. Yeah. Well, I would love to look at your best ever web this website design uh, and just uh, um, and see how much like Salvador Dali it really is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care, you all. Nice seeing you. Both JP Stay on after the recording if you want. Okay.